The Moving Loads module in SpaceGas lets you model vehicles driving on a bridge or an overhead crane traveling down a building, for example. In this video, we will show you how the wheel loads from a moving vehicle can be applied to a bridge deck and be combined with other static loads such as lane loads and dead loads. Using the bridge model you see on the screen, the first step is to select the members that could be loaded by the vehicle's wheels. Make sure you only select the members that could be directly loaded by the wheels and not any substructure members below the deck level that are not in contact with the wheels. Note that if you forget to select some of the deck members, they will not be loaded, even if a wheel travels directly over them. Only the members you select will be loaded. Let's start by selecting all of the deck members. Right-click and then select Generate Moving Loads. The first time you do this, you will need to create a scenario that contains your vehicles. In this scenario, we will have multiple vehicles traveling in different lanes, with the heaviest one in the outside lane. As the vehicles move, SpaceGas takes a snapshot of their position at regular intervals and creates a new load case for each position. Let's set it up so that this scenario creates load cases starting with load case 100, with a time interval between load cases of 1 second. This means that a vehicle traveling at 10 meters per second will travel 10 meters between successive load cases. In the table at the bottom of the scenario form, we can combine the moving load cases with other static load cases containing dead loads or lane loads, for example. More about this later. Now that we have the scenario defined, we need to add some vehicles to it. Libraries of various standard vehicles are supplied with SpaceGas, and you can click the Vehicle Library button to get access to them. You can also create your own library of custom vehicles if you want to, but in this case, we'll stick to standard vehicles. When you click on a vehicle, you can see its wheel layout in the window at the top. And you can click on any wheel to identify it in the table. Double-click the vehicle you want, and then input its speed, delay, and load factor. If we use a speed of 2 meters per second, Combined with our scenario time interval of 1 second, we will get load cases that represent the vehicle position after every 2 meters of travel. Note that the speed doesn't need to be realistic, as it is just used to calculate the distance traveled between successive load cases. If you have multiple vehicles that start moving at different times, you can specify a delay for some of them. This can be useful if a vehicle follows another one, however we will leave it at zero for this exercise. For a multi-lane bridge, you would probably want to factor the vehicles differently in each lane. Let's assume that for this vehicle, we will apply a load factor of 1.0. Next, we need to specify the vehicle's travel path. This can be done using coordinates or node numbers, or a mixture of both. If you know the coordinates or node numbers, you can type them straight into the travel path table. Or, if not, you can click the Select Path button and then pick the travel path graphically. We want to put this vehicle in the right-hand lane. However, it doesn't exactly coincide with any of the nodes in our model. We will therefore pick a line between two nodes on the right-hand side of the bridge and then offset the travel path to get to where we want it to be. By the way, you can have a curved travel path by just setting the curve radius. You can view your travel path without the vehicle. Or with the vehicle. You can pause the animation at any time by hitting the spacebar. In this case, we don't really want a curved travel path, and so let's put it back to straight. Now 
Now we will add a second vehicle, this time in the center lane. Moving at the same speed, but this time with a load factor of 0 0.8. We will use the same travel path. But this time use a different offset to place it at the center of the bridge. If you are going to use the same travel path repeatedly, you can store it by clicking the Store Path button and then recall it when you add other vehicles. Finally, we will add a third vehicle in the left-hand lane. Again, with the same speed, this time with a load factor of 0 0.4. And we will use the travel path previously stored by clicking the Use Stored Traveled Path option, but this time with a different offset. During the load case generation, each wheel load will be distributed to every selected member in its vicinity in proportion to its distance from the member. This means that a single wheel load could appear as multiple smaller loads on a number of members. If you don't want this and you would prefer each wheel load to be distributed to just one member, you can tick the Apply Wheel Load to Closest Member Only option. If a wheel moves off the bridge deck onto an adjacent supporting structure that you haven't modeled here, the Moving Loads module will still apply its load to the closest edge members of the bridge deck. To stop this happening, you can either tick the Ignore Wheels that Transfer Load to Just One Member option, or for more precise control, you can define an area so that any wheels which travel outside of that area become temporarily ignored. Now that we have set up the scenario, the only thing left to do is to possibly combine it with some other non-moving load cases, such as dead loads or lane loads. This is optional. However, we could do it by going back to the scenario properties and then filling out the table at the bottom. The basic moving loads will be generated in load case 100 and onwards, and so we will need an additional set of load cases that contain the moving loads plus the non-moving load case that we are combining them with. Let's combine our moving loads with load case 1, consisting of dead loads, and factor the dead load case by 1.2. Let's also apply a dynamic load allowance factor of 2.34 to our moving loads to allow for dynamic effects, and have the combined loads generated in load cases 200 and onwards. You could add extra rows to this table for additional sets of combined load cases if you wanted to. At this stage, we could add other scenarios that have the heaviest vehicle in other lanes or that contain other types of vehicles. However, for the purposes of this video, we will stay with just one scenario. That completes the input phase. The final step is to generate the moving loads. Let's briefly open the combination load cases table, and you can see how the moving load and dead load cases have been combined into load cases 200 and onwards using the multiplying factors we specified earlier. 
Now that we have the loads generated, we can switch to the non-renderer window, analyze the model, and then view the analysis results for all of the load cases. or obtain an envelope of them. You can then proceed to design or check your structure using the moving loads just like any other loads.